today I got you 15 books that you absolutely need to read this spring. Five are going to be new releases that you cannot miss. Another five are going to be happy, cozy, comfy, whimsical books. Another five are going to be more dramatic kind of stories, but still all of them are really good. I love them and I hope you enjoy them as well. It's starting with the new releases. Let's have probably one of the most popular ones, which is Witch King by Martha Wells. She's the writer of the Martha Bot series. She is coming back to fantasy with this first installment, which promises to be a very political story where we'll follow these almost demon called Kai that will find himself awakened in this weird moment. There's this mystery that will need to be unraveled and it promises to be a very good blend between a very adventure, political, character-driven, plot-driven story which hopefully will make one of the five stars for me this year. Then we continue with another great hope which is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sirafi from the same author as the Devabat trilogy. Now this is acknowledgedly a book that will get you into the summer vibes because we will follow Amina, who is almost a retired pirate, but she will get this last assignment that she cannot say no, and the story will unfold from there. It seems that the early reviews are very good and people are widely enjoying it. This author is known because she writes very large environments, very well-crafted characters, and I cannot wait for Amina, who is also an adult character. Then we move to A Day of Fallen Night, which is the prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree. This will happen around 500 years before the story of Priory. And one of the main things that we'll see in Priory, it seems we will also follow here, which are different points of view across this massive land where there's this evil that it's emerging. It seems that the author crafted the story in a way that you can connect with the characters way more, which was the main element that for me made Priory not being as good. And then we have another two which are not as popular but that to me are absolutely gems and the highlight of this spring. The first one is Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. I'm obsessed with her Greenbone Saga trilogy and although this is a standalone and it's a novella that is supposed to be super short, it will have at its core a trope that it's actually one of my most hated ones, which is vengeance. However, if I trust someone to craft vengeance and to craft characters, really properly good. It's her. I'm trusting her. And we will follow this woman whose twin sister has been killed. And as a result, she will start this revenge spree. This is the kind of read that we can absolutely do in one day. And let's hope that we are not destroyed afterwards. And last but not least, we will have the conclusion of the Drowning Empire trilogy by Andrea Stewart. So, Bonchard War. This series, it's one of my favorites. I just love the heart magic system that it has. It's based on special people being able to inscribe instructions in small bones, then putting these bones together in kind of like creatures and being able to command those creatures. The thing is that we will follow different points of view in this massive land where there are a lot of different threads that you will be following. There's a deeply political but also character-driven story and this author has proven time and time again that she's a master at writing politics, magic, it's just fascinating. And now that we have those anticipated books done, let's go to the whimsical recommendations. Those that to me are more springy, those that are kind of like the happy read, starting with one of my favorite which is a standalone called The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. This is just so beautiful that you won't be able to tear apart your hand from this book. It reads certainly very fast and we will have this girl that lives in this village that is tormented by the sea and in here they've decided that every now and then they need to sacrifice a woman to the sea in order to appease the sea god. When she gets the bottom of the sea, there's this upside down 
world where there's a lot to be unraveled. This is a story very rich with folklore, with beautiful settings, just very charming dynamic between the characters. They are soft, they are sweet, there's beautiful adventure. I just really loved it. And we continue with a Chinese retelling with a daughter of the moon goddess. In here, we'll mainly have our girl who has just run away from her home and she will need to start training, get her place and try to save her mom. The unique thing though is that this girl used to live on the moon and now she will need to live in the celestial court. There's so many beautiful elements like this whimsical celestial court, but there's also dragons. There's this sea that it's mesmerizing. Oh, it's beautiful. Honestly, the story moves super fast and I found myself hooked to these pages from beginning to end. And we changed to another favorite trilogy. In this case, it has a very rich Japanese folklore and that is A Shadow of the Fox. This trilogy certainly packs an emotional punch but overall you'll have this sense of joy reading it. You will be mesmerized by how beautiful the settings are described and in here we'll have mainly the sunshine grumpy trope as well as a quest at its core which to me are things that I really really like. There's also a slow burn and we will follow two main points of view. One of them is of Akitsune and she has a mission of taking a small piece of a scroll to safety because if this scroll is pulled together then a dragon might emerge and that dragon might grant one wish. So you can imagine how that wish in a bad hands can turn into something nasty. And along that way she will meet this shadow samurai that is one of the most powerful ones and he wields this sword and in that sword there's a demon inside. This story reads almost as if you're playing a video game and I found myself really enjoying every scene. And let's move now to a slightly different tone of story but we'll keep this whimsy and in this case we'll have half a soul. This is a story that will blend Fey plus Regency vibes. So if you're compelled about that as well as the standalones that are pretty short, pretty funny and with unique main characters, this is a hit for you. It will follow the story of this girl that one day will find this Fey and in this world Fey are bad. They are not gorgeous, beautiful, physical creatures, they are bad. And this fae will try to steal her soul, but only will be able to steal half. And as a result, she will be a little bit weird. She will be unique in a lot of ways. And the story will mainly kick off when lots of years have passed from that and our girl will be placed in society. But there's also mystery to be unraveled because there are some kids that seems to be dying and our girl will take upon herself to discover what happens. This is gonna be such a good blend of funny moments. There's this Regency ball vibes that you might expect with this tension with the characters. There's a little bit of a Pride and Prejudice kind of vibe but it's very loose and it's fantastic. And keeping the whimsical almost fairy vibe we have elements of cadence with the first one A River Enchanted. This duology it's so beautiful. The plot it's really compelling. We will have four different points of view here and and those points of view are quite mature. We will have a story that starts with girls disappearing and we will have a rich soft magic system here. But now on with the drama, with that moment when it's spring, it's just a cozy, cloudy day and you just want to also feel a little bit of a more deep emotions and let's start with no other than The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Now this is a book that if you haven't already read just please take it. If this is the read that you need a little bit of time you will want to savor this and this is a Greek retelling and mainly we will follow the story of Achilles but it will be told under the point of view of Patroclus who was his all-time friend and this is a story that it's just so beautiful, so heartbreakingly 
intense. In here, each phrase seems almost like a poem. It is not, but it feels beautiful. It feels transcendent. And what will hunt and make this book so special, it's that Patroclus. It's so naive, so unique. How he visualizes, how he sees Achilles is just so precious. And let's continue with Circe, but the same author. Now, this is not as dramatic, but it also has that touch of having, you know, like that intense feeling of, oh, I'm feeling stuff. And we will follow mainly Circe as she progresses throughout her whole life. So this will be very character-driven, very autobiographic. And the thing is that Circe discovered that she had powers and her powers were not really well taken. So this might make her the first witch in our society, but we'll see how she is treated, the different adventures that she will need to face, and everything is told in such a beautiful way. I loved it. This is a book that will embrace you, that will tell you stories. And if you like Greek mythology, this is the book for you, because it will be featured by a lot of different things that you will know. And before we change into more of a deathly kind of books, we will have Once Upon a Broken Heart from Stephanie Garber. This is an unconcluded trilogy, but, you know, if you want some angst, this is the best thing that you can read. I've never been as obsessed as I am with book two in terms of the character's dynamics and the tension that is between them. It has one of the best things that Carvel did, which is there's a great world that it's surrounded by whimsy elements with magic, with eternal creatures, with these castles, this prince, this creature that has magic and that it's very grey, but at the same time it just makes for a great main character and there's such tension. The characters are very not perfect and they are charming. And now let's go to a new obsession which is Foxglove King by Hannah Whedon. And this is a book that will bring you vibes from the rich Versailles in France, talking about death magic and life magic. And there's a love triangle as well. There's this gothic vibe to it, but at the same time, it's so vivid. There's a mystery that will need to be unraveled. The thing that is happening that needs solving, it's so important. There's a lot of politics. There's this court. It's such a fast and a good read. And let's conclude this list with also a slightly dark book, which is a Belladonna. Also then concluded, just first book it's out, but the second one will be coming this spring as well. And this is unique and slightly deadly because our girl has the power of not dying. However, she knows that whenever she is on the verge or when she is supposed to be dying, she can talk with death and she will find this power and she will use it in order to solve a mystery. We will have these balls, we will have these characters that are slightly grey, you know, there's no sunshine in in this story. This is the perfect book to go if you want something a little bit dark, but that still screams as print. And these are the 15 fantasy books that I had for you. Let me know down below if you like them, what are you planning to read. If you have other recommendations, I cannot wait to hear them. <laughs>